So welcome everyone to Tuesday meditation. Let's uh, start by sitting comfortably, sitting up comfortably. Check out the body. Really feel the body from the inside. What wants to be loosened up here and how would I go about doing that? And let's um let's start by singing descending fifths. Most of you have done this before. And we'll do it on the five vowel sounds, a, ah, a, e, o, u. So the idea is really expanding. I made a big discovery the other day, which is that if you're, if you're submerged in water, if you're in a tub or a swimming pool or a hot tub, something like that, and if you really fill up, you really spread your ribs and really just inhale deeply, you become more buoyant. Your body starts to rise in the water. Now, maybe that was obvious to everyone else, but I lived my whole life up to this point without realizing that. And it was a real, I found it was really good. It really helped make me more aware of my breathing. You know, what would it, gave me this kind of feedback to if I'm really filling up, then I start to, my body starts to rise out of the water. And then when I really <sighs> exhale, the body starts to sink more into the water. So with that in mind, as we fill up, just really spread the ribs. Have this idea that you're, you know, you want your body to be buoyant at the end of that inhale. And then we want to completely empty it as we release, not push, just release the breath on the sound. Ah, uh, with the idea that it's going out 360 degrees beyond the edges of the universe. We're just melting into that. <clears throat> so breathing in, becoming buoyant. Uh, Do it again. Uh... Hey. 
letting yourself melt with the sound, getting lost in the sound, lost in the sound outside of time. And now not doing anything in particular. Just resting in the silence. The silence that's always here. The silence of our own awareness. The silence of our own beingness. Not a silence that we can create. No one can create silence. The silence that pre exists everything, coexists with everything. The silence from which everything is perceived. Right here, where you've been every moment of your life pulsing through every moment of experiencing. All the noise, all the activity experienced from this place of silent non-activity, beingness right here. So nothing to do but be as you are. Just resting in that situation, resting in being as you are, letting go into it. Surrendering your grasping, your plans, your strategies. throwing it all into the cool fire of your own silent beingness right here.
thoughts come and go, witnessed by this silence. Feelings come and go, sensations come and go, sounds come and go, witnessed by this silence. The comings and goings are constantly changing. The witnessing is ever the same. There's nothing to it. Just as the objects that come and go before a mirror constantly change, move around, new things, old things. But the mirror is just the mirror, nothing to it, pure reflectivity. So just resting in this pure reflectivity, which is awareness, which is silence, which is being, which is you. Relaxing back into it.
Now just very um, quietly, very delicately, take a look and notice whether in some way you're maintaining some uh, intention to be meditating. To, mm, to kind of keep the motor of meditating going. Something that you're doing, even very subtly, that when I ring the bell at the end, you're going to stop doing that. Just take a look. See if that's going on. And if not, fine. But if it is, then let it go now. As if I'm, I've just rung the bell. And you, okay, stop doing that. Whatever subtle effort, even that subtle shadow of an effort, shadow of an intention, just throw that into the fire. Every shadow, every just intention of an intention to meditate, just throw it all into the fire. And we just sit here in the freedom that remains when we throw it all into the fire. The freedom, the open space.
and take a few minutes to sit with the eyes closed, gently bringing the body back to a more active state. Okay, how's everybody doing? Okay. Sorry, how's everybody doing? All these cameras seem to have gone dark, uh, so <clears throat> turn your cameras back on. I know you'll back. You're back in the the land of the whatever this is. The land of the speaking. Okay. How are we doing? Everybody good? Good. What are your questions tonight, or comments, observations, complaints, requests for refunds? Someone wants to ask something. Don't be shy. Come on, Cole. You're the man. I always, you know, I mean, like it's great. It's great. Every, every, really, it, it's always happens. The person who asks a bunch of questions, everyone I know, I've been in the sitting in the groups, going, "Oh man, I'm so glad he asked that." So you're doing everyone a favor, stepping up here. So what do you got tonight? Oh. I guess my experience tonight, I just kind of experienced an active thinking mind. And when you said, just notice a minute if you're trying to do something. Mm -hmm. I noticed that I was exerting some effort, constantly trying to go back to that open space because there are instances where um, I just, it's like, like that thing that you do, it's like nothing. And then just like, 
I mean, the mind is always thinking. I don't think you can ever just turn it off. But correct. I I noticed that I just have like kind of gotten on the ride, like latched on to my thoughts and mm -hmm. I enjoy it. I love thinking because I was thinking about a bunch of awesome stuff, but mm -hmm. um, so, and then another kind of thing that I noticed is, you know how there's like the distinction between like the back of your mind and the front of your mind? I don't know if you guys have heard that, but I've. Well, are you, are you now, are you talking about something? Um, uh, are you talking about something that you've actually experienced or an I kind of a concept of something or like a concept, like, mm -hmm. uh, just put that in the back of your mind for later or something. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Like file it away, something yeah. like that. I mean, maybe that's not the best way to take this, but I kind of noticed when I experienced those like moments that mm -hmm. were, I mean, just the open space, I noticed that there were still thoughts going on in the background, like in the back of my mind, but it's not like I was hitching a ride with them. Right. Yes. And then though, inevitably, I would think about that. And then like, that would be a start of, you know, the train. It's just so tricky. Like I go like back and forth and back and forth. And I just was wondering, like, is there ever an experience that's just one or the other, or is that just the experience? Like, do you just experience the open space that you talk about, or is it just, I, I don't know. I don't even know. Yeah. yeah. Once in a while people experience, and you know, it doesn't, have to be with reference to what I experience in particular, but because you know, you know the range of experiences here. And you know that, well, let me put it this way. Sometimes people do experience, and we've, it's happened in these, these sessions, and people have reported on it, where it was just, yeah, resting in that open space of awareness with nothing else going on. No, apparently, no thoughts, no feeling, no, just, right? And what's nice is you're at a point now you can talk about that. You can go and, and you and I both know what we're talking about, mm -hmm. right? Now, if you go out in the world to those other 8 billion people and try to talk about, <laughs> right? And how somehow that is has a preciousness and an importance and a truth and a peace that none of this, all this other stuff has, they have no idea what you're talking about, right? This is what the Buddha called, he, the Buddha uses a lot in, in the, the sutras, the transcripts of the Buddha's talks. There's a phrase that he uses sometimes, ordinary people, meaning people who've not experiences and it i don't know what the original you know poly language is but in that english translation it sounds a tad condescending right ordinary people but hey <laughs> right it, it, the the fact of the matter is you kind of know or you don't the fact that you know that is pretty much game over everything else now is details Everything else now is details. Sometimes, okay, if once in a while it seems like you're just resting in that with nothing else, no thoughts, no anything, that's great. But you know what? It's not important. It's not important. It's not something to look for. And as you know, if you start trying to look for it, then you're, you're once again engaged in being active. And in fact, what you describe, the other thing that you described, where you're, you're consciously resting in that wide open 
silent space of awareness with thoughts going on, if you want to say, in the back of your mind, the front of your mind, the, on the left, on the right, all, all these inadequate terms because we're trying to use spatial terms for something that's not spatial. But we know, again, we know what we're talking about, where it's going on and we have not, I like your expression, hitched a ride. We've not engaged with it. Um, do you drive a, can you drive a stick shift? Yeah, I actually just learned how. Great. Oh, okay. So this is, so this is for you. It's like, it's like the motor's going, but we've depressed the clutch. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter that the motor's spinning because it's not engaging with the drivetrain. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it doesn't matter. The engine can spin all at once. It doesn't matter. We're free. Our freedom does not consist of making thoughts stop. Our freedom consists of resting in peace in the knowledge that it doesn't matter whether thoughts are there or not, whether feelings are there or not, whether sensations are there or not, whether whether the Romans banging nails through our hands is there or not. The ultimate that's the that's the final exam, right? What the, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So what you reported on a minute ago, a few minutes ago, okay, you, you, you're there and there's thoughts going on in the background. That's much more important that the clarity of that perception is much more important than, oh, a time when there's only the silence. Okay. Because, because what that means is if you can be sitting there on a chair with your eyes closed, resting in boundlessness, even where thoughts are going on, it means essentially it's, not, it's, it's only a small move to where you're out of the chair. Your eyes are open. You're walking around. Having thoughts, hearing sounds, engaging activity. How do you do? Good to see you again. Blah, blah, blah. Where we were going to the job. We're da, 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 while resting in the boundlessness. That's where we're going with this. That's, that's what we're growing into with this. And that's way more important than, oh, sometimes thoughts go away. And mm -hmm. if once in a while the thoughts go away, great. Great, enjoy. And then don't try to get it back next time because then <laughs> you just, you make things complicated. And that's the effort. That yeah. I was trying to exert during this meditation was like, Oh, I do really like that. It's that's what I feel like meditation should be. Right. Is those moments where it's just yeah, yeah. That, you quickly right. realize that that's just it's like I mean your brain. It's like your heart. It's just there to think. Your heart's just there to pump blood. Right. Yes. You're it's supposed to. Just as the eye is supposed to see colors, the ear is supposed to hear sounds, the mind is supposed to think thoughts. Coming back, so, so, some, some people here may not have heard this one, but this, this one's very, an insight that's very useful uh, in this regard that comes from Buddhist psychology. In Buddhist psychology, they talk about six senses, hearing, seeing, tasting, touching, smelling, and thinking. It's just a sense, just like seeing and hearing and the, and the rest, right? And, and each of those six senses has a certain dedicated object of that sense, right? For, for seeing, sees uh, colors and shapes, hearing, hears sounds, pitch and timbre and all that, you know, blah, blah, blah. And thinking perceives thoughts. Thoughts are objects of sensory perception. We perceive a thought. It's just like perceiving a sound or a color or a texture. It's a little more subtle. That's all. And when you when when you have that insight, when you have that understanding, it's just another thing there. It's another part of the the landscape, the wallpaper. And you know, for us to go, oh, how can I rest to settled in peace when the wallpaper is pink? See, that's just us creating a problem with 
with temporarily faulty understanding. I feel very happy tonight, Cole, hearing what you're saying because I see you've just you've gotten so much more clarity on this thing than than you had some months ago. It's just great. It's just really, really uh, gratifying. You know, this is uh, this is the project. This is the project, and we're all getting there together, and we all help each other. You know, I get to participate in these meditations. <laughs> Right, and, and uh, yeah, it's really great. It's really great. I wanted to share something with you guys that I stumbled upon today that I thought was really interesting. Um, it's the idea that consciousness is a product. It, it's an extension from a long line of happenings so i guess there's like a common belief i mean it certainly was my belief that consciousness is a result of brain mind and body and it's kind of this isolated being and that's what results with consciousness but then this is what I heard. It's like, what is my consciousness without the soil, the plants, the, the microorganisms, the atmosphere, the sun? No, it's without those things, there is not this thing. But I, I just find that really interesting. I mean, with, I don't know, I'm still figuring out like spiritual beliefs. I, I would say I'm more agnostic than anything, but just this kind of wholeness of the universe and we're just like kind of the little leaves or fruit at the fingertips of it. Mm. Yeah, that's very beautiful. I, I, one thing I would say is that, especially in a time like you're going through now, where there's such a transformation going on, such a such a, a, you know, growing into the clarity of, of this thing. Um, that I would say, you know, stay very relaxed about, oh, what are my beliefs? Or, you know, when you read this theory or this, um, uh, you know, some, someone's kind of scheme of the way things are, um, uh, and just kind of, kind of be graceful and welcoming and enjoy all of it, but don't be in a hurry to uh, arrive at any final conclusions. Um, because your, your awareness two weeks from now is going to be clearer than it is right now. And it's, and it's clearer now than it was two weeks ago. Uh, and I think what you'll find, if your experience with that is anything like mine, and I think most people that engage in this, is that the clearer you become on the actual experience, at a certain point you're able to go back and then look at oh, what this person's saying and what that person's saying and what this religion says and what that philosophy says, that all used to sound so different and we used to go oh but wait this guy and oh but this one oh and like it's really important for me to get which is the right one and and the the buddhists say it's all not self and the hindus say it's all self and sounds like a, you know 180 degree contradiction the clearer you get in the actual experience the more it becomes oh 
That's what they're talking about. That's what they're talking about. They're pretty much talking about the same thing, the same reality, because, you know, reality is reality. There's no Hindu reality or Christian reality or, you know, there's just this reality. Um, and, you know, there's this saying from the ancient scriptures in, in India, um, 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 uh, a, a, a truth is one, its names are many. You know, truth is one, its names are many. So there's so it's all these different names, all these different ways to talk about it, which are all kind of inadequate, but can be very beautiful, you know. I find it useful to, to, to when when we deal with these descriptions to regard it less as like um scientific description and more like poetry. You know, we're sp we, we speak poetically, poetically. For instance, the thing you said about, okay, consciousness, what we call my consciousness being like the end product <clears throat> of all this kind of organic evolution, like we're the, you know, the final buds at the, at the, at the tips of the bush. And that's a very beautiful, one beautiful poetic perception of the thing. Right. Another perception of the thing is that it consciousness or awareness, they mean the same thing. I like the word awareness better because there's fewer constant, some more open sounds. Sounds more to me like the, the textualness of, of awareness. Right. I like the W in there. Um, that awareness comes first. That awareness, beingness, is before time, before cre When we say before time, it sounds like before it, in, at an earlier time than time, but it's not. It means in eternity, outside of time, right? Now, again, this is not just theoretical. This is part of your experience. When, as you were saying before, when we're resting in that silence, there's no time there. There's no space there right? It's not big, it's not small, it's not long, it's not short, right? There's no duration, there's no no nothing. And I love seeing you actually thinking, checking, and nodding your head. Yeah. Checking it out with your actual experience. That is, that's the thing to always do with this stuff. So, so in that sense, consciousness or awareness is not anywhere in the process. It's not the final bud. It's not the first root. It's, it's, in a sense, the whole drama of whatever you, we got. We got the Big Bang. We got your personal birth. We got waking up this morning. All of that happens within this awareness, which is I, and which everyone calls it I, but there's only one of them. Right, because it has no qualities. There is no Dean awareness that's a special Dean flavor and a coal awareness that's a special coal flavor, right? Because as you know, it's completely flavorless. That's when you're going, that's what you're indicating. Flavorless, featureless, textureless, boundless, timeless, spaceless, right? This is liberation, my friend. This is moksha, moksha, liberation liberation from the strictures of, of, of all those qualities. And you know what that tastelessness tastes like. Now, like my old teacher, Mari, she said, it's just nothing, but there's something very good about it. Right? There's something, isn't it interesting? What a paradox that it's, it's nothing, but mm, it's just, we're just drawn to it. We're just drawn to it because it's home because it's, it's our own nature, it's us. Everything else out here is a little bit we're, you know, a stranger in a strange land. Until in the more advanced thing, we start to realize all this other stuff is also it. All, all these tossing waves also are nothing but silent ocean just rising in these different forms to express the formlessness, right? That's, that's a little more further down the road. But for now, just to get that, to, to, okay, my little wave, 
that I identified with me settles into this ocean of silence beyond space and time. And then more and more I start to realize, oh, that ocean can be there even while the waves are tossing, even while I'm thinking thoughts and meditation. And then start to even, when I open my eyes, come out of meditation, I'm still resting in the silence. And then the kind of the final thing is recognizing that all those waves are nothing but ocean, nothing but silence. But that's, that's, that's later. <laughs> that's the, that the post-grad level. Yeah, yeah. But can, but can you see, can you feel kind of philosophically it has to be? Otherwise, there's still, you know, it's like, it's like uh, when Einstein, you know, looking for the unified field and all of the physicists, they got it down to like four forces. What was it? The, the uh, gravity, electromagnetic, the weak force, the strong force, right? But, but Einstein knew, no, there's something. It, it can't be that everything in the universe comes down to four things. It's got to come down to one thing. And they didn't, he didn't find it in his lifetime, but they've been getting close. So in the same way that, you know, we get uh, what we come down to, what everything else comes down to, it, it can't be two. That's what we call advaita, non-dual. That's what that means, non-dual. Um, so that, but that perception, okay, what I am is this boundlessness, spacelessness, timelessness. And then we, I started to say before, we go back, you can, you know, go back to if you were raised in a religion and then, you know, and maybe as a kid, you, okay, you went to Sunday school and, but, but, you know, you take that, that's what they told you, it must be true. And then later, you know, as a questioning person, you go, I don't know about this stuff. But then kind of there's a third phase where you've got enough experience under your belt you can go back and, and listen fresh to what those expressions are. In this case, for instance, there's this, there's this business, I love this thing, and it's in the Gospels where, um, oh, who is it, the Pharisees, I guess, who are always giving Jesus a hard time. And they, they challenge him with something about um, the laws of Moses, and something, you know, do you be really belong to the, the tribe of Abraham and Isaac, right? The, are you a good Jew like the rest of us? And Jesus says, you know, and, you know, of course, it's Abraham and Isaac as the patriarchs, the founders of the line, right? And Jesus responds, before Abraham and Isaac were, I am, Right? Before Abraham and Isaac were, I am. Not I was, which is how people often misunderstand it. Not like, oh, I was somehow magically, metaphysically back there in time, even before the, you know, the, the beginning of our ancestry in time. But before Abraham and Isaac were, I am. Right? What he's describing there is what you experience when you settle into that which is outside of time. Before, before the Big Bang was, I am. Right? Before this conversation was, before all my personal history, which is really just a bunch of mishmash of these thoughts that we call memories. Prior to all that, I am. Right? Not prior in time, but outside of time. Because where does all that stuff happen? It happens in here. And, where's, and what does all this depend on? That depends on this. This does not depend on this. This depends on this. Right? You hearing that? Oh, you can't, you can't. You can have this without this. You can't have this without this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so this is the prime, this is, this is the before the Big Bang. This is the bangless, the banglessness, <laughs> okay? Uh, and, um, and this is where everything happens because there's nowhere else for things to happen. And when things can happen, things cannot happen. And when you've had a, some tastes of this, then you can start to see that all the drama, the drama of 
Uh, then this thing happened, and I had this romance, and then this broken heart, and then this, this job, and this job ended, and then this challenge, this challenge got resolved, and this other thing. All that drama takes place within this space. This space is the, the, uh, the proscenium arch. This is the open space of the puppet theater. Everything else is the puppet show, <laughs> including birth and death, including birth and death. And that when the time comes of physical death, it's another one of these things happening within this, and it doesn't change this. And that's where, that's where you know, the poet said, death, where is thy sting? You know, and I think most, I suspect most people walk around most of the time in the back of their head with this unresolved fear of death. Unresolved, oh my God, I'm going to be annihilated. That's terrifying. And even if you, you know, I think I suspect most people, they push that away and so forth. But if you haven't faced it and you haven't looked at it, if, if you have, if once you've had this experience and had some pretty, some pretty good clarity on it, you know, you can consider, then, and, and, and then you see where everything falls in. Everything is just these blips coming and going within that, and that includes birth and death then there's that deep relaxation that when we think about Jesus, the Buddha, Socrates, Shankara, Lao Tzu, you know, all the great Ananda Mai Ma, all the great uh, enlightenment heroes and heroines, without even knowing anything of the specifics about them, we feel somehow we know they didn't have a bunch of anxiety about death. <laughs> right? The The... The, 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 something about the essence of their wisdom, the essence of what made them sages, made them enlightenment heroes and heroines. You know, part of the deal is you're not worried about death, and this is why. This is why. If we get nothing else from this, that's a pretty good thing to have. To lose your fear of the thing that most people are walking around with an unspoken terror of. That's, and that's got to affect everything you do. That's got to affect when people have that unspoken, un, un, unaddressed terror. Everything else has got, to some degree is filtered through that. So, so it's good to change. Okay, let's get Summer into the conversation here. Um, yes, please. I've been sitting here thinking about this uh and when you said everything's filtered through that, it sort of speaks to this too. Um, well, first of all, there's an app that you can download that reminds you, will remind you of your death three times a day. I just read about it this week. Uh -huh. So you can face, face death three times a day and think about the fact that you're going to die. It's called, I think it's called I croak or you croak. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Uh -huh. <laughs> but um, I, I wanted to talk about something that's been really exciting for me for after you know having meditated for a while. Um, I've noticed in my day that um, that my thoughts are, you know, I'm thinking them obviously, but I I'm able to distance myself from them. And I've grown up. I'm a very sensitive person. I've always been so easily you know, kind of, um, what would the phrase, uh, the expression be like torn from my, my, I've never been very anchored, you know, just kind of thrown this way and that way based on what somebody might say to me. And, um, it's really changed for me where I am able to kind of hold my own energy and, um, and what people say and what my thoughts are that are kind of floating by, I'm able to just sort of look at them and really kind of not give them any, you know, just think, oh, that's just what I'm thinking. It doesn't mean that. And so the, the beautiful part of it for me is that um, I'm less reactive. And when I do finally um, speak or just by just being me, I'm sending a different ripple is what I like to think of it as I'm sending out different energy completely. And the whole dynamic, like my dynamic at work has changed. Um, it just the people around me, I feel very connected 
to everything. And, and I know that, I don't know if you guys have ever had it. I have these days, I call it my mojo where I just follow my nose and they're, especially if I'm in a new town, um, this happens to me where everything's really novel and opportunity awaits. And, you know, I really can get into it on those kind of days, but when I'm in my day of, you know, uh, my, my, work day or whatever that I kind of know what's going to happen I can fall back into not following my nose Mm -hmm. um but it's been really great to be uh just more aware of everything so I can just sort of relax and um send out those different ripples I don't know really how else to describe it but it's a great feeling yeah no lips yay um no, and, and you've described you've described it very beautifully um you. you know again it's it's so fulfilling to hear these these reports and you know you've been doing this with us for what a month or two um that's i've done other meditations right. yes mm-hmm. i just found out about you so yeah right, right. yeah um and 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 but what's interesting is like a couple of the things you said, like, like I'm able to distance myself more from my thoughts, right? Okay, good. There, it's a very beautiful experience you're describing. When that's happening, let's take, let's take a little closer look at it now. Is there actually something that you do to distance yourself from the thoughts? Or is it just, oh, yeah, they're, 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 right. I'm just looking at it. Exactly. If I, if I feel tension or anger or sadness, I just look at the thought. I think, what am I thinking right now? That's what I'm thinking. And it's not me. It's just a thought. It's not you. It's just a thought. Oh my God. Yeah. That's you tattoo that on the insides of your eyelids, you know, and actually you don't even have to do that because the whole thing comes along so naturally it's, but I mean, this is like, this is like, we should we should hire one of these these airplanes that pulls the banner along the you know the beach it's not you it's just a thought yeah it's not possible all the time but it is it is not yet not yet it will be it will be that's that's what what you're growing toward that's what you're growing toward because because as we were saying it's not something that you have to do we don't create, we can't create the, you know, reality is reality. And the reality is you're not your thoughts. The reality is thoughts are just some stuff. And you know, a lot of the thoughts that you have, you know, where do they come from? Like, like opinions. You know, if we take a poll and we just ask people, and we don't ask them, are you a liberal? Or are you a conservative? But we just ask, are your politics uh, essentially like the, those of your parents or, or opposite from your parents. Most people, I think their politics are pretty much like, like those of their parents. Okay. I mean, not everybody, but, but probably most people. Now what that means is, and you know what it's like, you read the paper that, you know, so much crazy intense stuff going on right now. And you have a very strong, and it seems very clear, of course, all right-minded people are going to see it the way I do. Obviously, the, the, these guys, this team is a bunch of jerks and this team is trying to make things right. But if I'd been born in the house next door with a different set of parents, it would have seemed very obvious to me that no, this team is right and this team is a bunch of jerks. Because what is that? Thoughts. Thoughts. And, the, and thoughts are like, like, in a way, they're like the baggage that we, you know, the, these kind of calcified thoughts, these like opinions, the stuff we carry around, it's kind of, you know, weight, it's kind of baggage that we picked up from somewhere. But if we think that, oh, this is me, I am a progressive, I am a conservative, rather than I am, right, boundless, silent awareness within which the thoughts of a progressive nature or conservative nature have formed a constellation and that constellation has been hanging around pretty persistently for the last umpty ump years see it's too long to say so we just say oh i'm a conservative or i'm a liberal but what it really means is this constellation of thoughts is hanging around but no matter how long those thoughts hang around it's still not you it's still just a bunch of thoughts right 
right? And and you can and it can be like personal stuff, like oh, there's this personal situation I'm dealing with, you know, I had this relationship breakup. I'm just I'm walking around with this broken heart all the time, right? Now, in that case, let's just say hypothetically, everyone, whatever your version of that thing could might be, that thing. Oh, this is me. I'm walking around, right? Okay, that thing, let's say the broken heart or the the political conviction or whatever it is, where is that when you're parallel parking in a tight space? Where is what? Where is that? Where is that? Th where is your, where is your li liberal politics or your conservative politics or your broken heart or your, your great aspiration for the future Whatever your stuff is, where is it when you're parallel parking in a tight space? Right. It's nowhere because you don't have the bandwidth to think about it because you're too busy. You're engaged in trying to get parallel parked. Okay. Question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but, but let, let me let me just finish that. I, yeah. I, I just want to make sure it's clear the, the point I'm making there. The point is that it's that that stuff only has its apparent reality when we're thinking about it the moment we stop thinking about it right like oh my god whatever broken heart broken heart politics politics and then you're going down the first slope on the roller coaster Wah! and then all you can think is Wah! all that stuff that other stuff is gone because it's just made out of thoughts it's just made out of thoughts but we we tend to identify it. we say i am this i am that but you are not that. You, that's why all those thoughts are always, at, that's why we don't have to, as you said, distance ourselves from it. It's always separate from us. So yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead, please. Okay, so if we are thinking all the time, we have thoughts going on all the time. And I've noticed- most, most, most of the time, yeah. Most of the time, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that I am, more able now to choose my thoughts so i don't want that one. the one that's floating by right now or the one that's mm -hmm. in my mind you know at work when you know i'm bored or i don't know what yeah uh or stressed if i don't want that thought anymore i'm more aware of it so i can decide to choose another thought yeah and, which i like and in a way in a way i feel like those these thoughts sort of are me in that my whole world changes depending on what I choose to think. You, my outside world, people around yeah. me, things that are that come into my orbit are I have evidence of this. Yeah, I'd say yeah, there there's some there's some relative truth to that. I'd say I I I don't want to say there's absolute truth to that, but there's some some relative truth. Let, let's let's put it this. Let's let's keep it in. What I would say is the same thing I was saying with Cole before. Don't be in a hurry to come to final conclusions, because as your experience continues to evolve, the whole thing will just become more clear to you. And I and it sounds to me like what you're describing is that as see what happens is every time we sit, anytime you spend, you know, 20 minutes or one minute sitting in meditation, letting the thoughts come and go, relaxing back into the silence that you are, which is in, inherently free and independent of thoughts. Every minute you spend that you log doing that further weakens the power that the apparent power that thoughts have over you when you come out of meditation, right? It, it just makes, makes it clearer and clearer to you that those things are just there like the wallpaper. They have no power over you. So they're, and that's what you're describing. You're not caught up. It's not like, oh, the first thought that comes along, whether it's a, let's, see, let's use the term useful. The useful thoughts and the, and the less useful thoughts. The beneficial thoughts and the thoughts that may be detrimental to your own well-being and that of others. So you're more free to pick which ones to pick the useful ones to pick to pick the beneficial ones and and it's not that you're making the others go away you don't have to it's just you're engaging in this one and not engaging in that one 
right? This is the same thing we again we we're seeing with with coal. It's like you know the car the 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 motor can be going, but if you disengage the clutch, it it doesn't turn the wheels, so it doesn't matter that that motor's going. It doesn't matter that those those thoughts are there. Thank God. I mean, in my own case, thank God because I there's there's a whole lot going on in here. <laughs> there's a there's a whole lot going on in here, and uh, you know I was just born with it, you know, from the word go for this extremely active. Mind. I I can remember before I could talk, okay, and I could remember realizing that the grown ups didn't think I understood what was going on. They didn't think I could understand what they were saying because I couldn't talk yet. But I, but I you know, was, was, had all this thinking going on, and I realized, okay, I'm going to have to learn this language thing so I can, you know, interact with the grown-ups and tell them what I'm thinking and so that they'll know I, I, I know what they're talking about. Right. So, so yeah, I've, it's, 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 it's very busy in here. You know, I mean, it's so busy. I had to learn to meditate as, you know, as a survival skill. Right. And, um, you know, thoughts are fine as long as you know, they're, you know, it's like they, they say on some of these, these videos and things it's for entertainment purposes only. <laughs> right? Just don't take it too seriously. Okay, good. Yay, what else tonight? Anyone else tonight? How you how you Santa girls doing tonight? We're just thoroughly enjoying listening to everybody. The questions yeah. are very applicable. Thank you guys. You know, Summer and Cole. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And I was thinking also how I have like you, Dean, I've actually watched my thoughts almost like they were, I was watching theater. They were inter actually, my thoughts were entertaining me um, mm -hmm. when I, since I've been little. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was fun to have a dialogue and it was like something else over there. Mm -hmm. But yeah. 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 yeah it's all yeah. big punching. They gave all these DNA thoughts to me and then I have a bunch of my own. I'm just yeah. a fool in that case. <laughs> yeah. 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 We can't wait till you come here. Yeah, we're excited to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. It looked like we were uh, for 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 about two weeks. It looked like we were out of the woods with this quarantine stuff, and then. Yeah. Uh, but. Where, where are you guys? We're about thirty minutes outside of Seattle in the foothills of the Cascades. Nice. Yeah. Where are you? What about you? I'm in Santa Monica. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm next door to Dean. Just kidding. No, <laughs> you could just hear him. You could just do one of those telephone. Yeah, cameras. just just open open the window. Yeah, get a couple of <laughs> cup piece of string and a couple of Dixie cups. Oh, I miss I miss coming to your home, Dean, so much. Who am I? Who am I hearing? Tages. Tages. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I actually feel tears. It's oh, such oh, a warm, oh. warm moment. Yeah. 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 Look, this is a nice place, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's such a lovely thing having this room fill up with, with, with people, but this is, this is great. This is a miracle that we can do this. That we can be in different parts of the country and, you know, different parts of the world. Sometimes we get people from different countries and we, we can do this. It's incredible. You know, and and you know, and I slap these things up on YouTube, and then I get emails from from people saying, "Oh, this video really did X, Y, and Z for me." And and uh, yeah, it's 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 great. You know, I just feel so lucky with this stuff. By the way, uh, I'll be sending out a newsletter, um, but there will I'm I'm going to take having having said all this about how much I love this. I'm going to take uh, a couple of weeks off. Um, so, <laughs> so we will not be meeting next week and I think the week after that as well. I've got to check the calendar, but I'll, I'll put it all in a newsletter. Okay. But uh, 
you know, it's all it's all there on YouTube. Uh, you know, you can go back and watch watch some reruns. We'll put this session up. This is a good session. Good. Anything else tonight? Are you going to finish your book? Uh, am I going to finish your book? I have to. I have to. My deadline is August first. Oh, there it's go. coming That's up. It. Yeah, but I'm, no, I'm in. I'm in the final sprint. The, la the last couple of days, I've been I've been curating the illustrations, which I thought was going to take me like a day, and it's you know taken me like you know a week and a half, um, um, uh, tracking down illustrations and which ones are in public domain or fair use, and, da -da -da, and this one, and this, da -da -da. and now I'm 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 going through the like my my final read through, making making final tweaks, and. Um, uh, at this point, I have to often, I have to go to, this happened to me a couple of times today. I had to go to, to, to Yaffa and, you know, cause you know, I've been looking at this paragraph on and off for a, a year and a half now. It just, I have no idea whether it makes any sense in the world at all. Would you do me a favor, honey, read this paragraph. Tell me, tell me if it means anything. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, we're, we're, we're in the final sprint. And, um, yeah, yeah, um, um, and, and yeah, I am excited about this one. Thanks. Thanks for, for your support. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, almost there. I think it's, I think it's, it's Kirtan time. Hang on. Let me, let me, let me plug in my ax. Okay, let me let me uh, mute you all for the moment, so you can sing along if you feel like it without Zoom chaos ensuing. Om 
What do those words mean? They mean exactly what we've been talking about the whole session. They mean, as Cole so eloquently put it, But we like to sing about this stuff and make pictures and, right? So we give words to the stuff that has no words. Make pictures, make, give forms to the stuff that's formless. No harm, as long as we remember that that's what it is. So may all beings swiftly realize And thus may peace prevail everywhere. Loka samasta suki no bhavantu. Loka samasta suki no bhavantu. Loka samasta suki no bhavantu. Om shanti shanti shanti. Thank you, everyone. See ya. Thank you, Dean. Have fun. Enjoy being. <laughs>